Let's now look at some of the specific examples of how our donations are put to good use. This video was shown in all congregations in that country. But what can you do to support this work? You can give financial support by your voluntary contributions to the worldwide work. Third, the building of a new Bethel is a huge undertaking. We will need many volunteers to help with the construction project. If you are able, please ask your elders for a construction volunteer application form. What's good, my G? Let's go, bro! What? Are you supposed to be British Hype Man? Oh, that's right, I'm the Hype Man, bro! I provide 50% hype, you provide 50% hype, it's 100% hype, let's go, bro! You're ridiculous. I, I don't even know what to say. How's the YouTube channel going, my G? Oh, it's going pretty rough, man. Only 1% growth over the last five years. 1% growth! Let's go, bro! That's massive growth, bro! Let's go! No. That's not at all. That's that's. What you're talking about? One percent is huge. You're gonna build a new studio to record videos in, my G. A, a new studio with one percent growth? That doesn't even make sense. How would you pay for that? That's what are you talking about? I got a perfect plan to get it funded, my G. We'll okay. go to Central Africa and get poor Africans to pay for it, my G. Let's go. Are you are, are you serious? That is like the most disturbing. A disgusting thing I've ever heard. That's your plan to fund this? Oh, you would have to be absolutely a lunatic to do that. <sighs> Welcome to Lost Light. Hello and welcome back to the JW Thoughts channel. My name is Wally and today we are looking at The Lost Light, where we are examining the 2015 May JW broadcasting that was unlisted, therefore making the talks harder to find. And there was one particular talk in there that was erased completely. Now this is going to just be my opinion, sort of speculating on why I think they have erased this video totally. But I think it has a lot to do with the optics of it. The only problem with my particular hypothesis is it would require the narcissistic buttheads that are the governing body to have had a moment of self-awareness. So take that for what you will. Uh, to the people in the comments section that ask why I drink a Starbucks every day. Well, I don't spend $8 every single day buying coffee. This is a to-go mug that I found in a garbage can when I had very, very little and I needed a cup. And I use it to this day, uh, just about 10 years later, as a reminder that you don't need that much to be happy. So it's not a symbol of affluence, it's a reminder of poverty, <laughs> basically. So anyway, I'm going to continue to use that uh, because I like the cup and it still works absolutely brilliantly. And to the people that uh, commented on that, well, you probably noticed that my hoodie tie things are a different length, but I did that on purpose just to annoy you. Anyway, with all of that being said, let's do this thing. Why are you the way that you are? Let's now look at some of the specific examples of how our donations are put to good use. When the preaching work prospers, the need increases for branch facilities to organize the work and to translate and print our literature. Recently, one such project started in Cameroon, a country in Central Africa. Oh yes, the prosperity and growth. Why doesn't Stephen Lett ever give us the numbers? Because then I wouldn't have to go back and look in the old yearbooks, but I did. So between 2010 and 2015, uh, the six year period, there was an increase of 5,200 uh, baptized or peak publishers. And then there were curiously 8,700 baptisms. So I don't really know uh, how you can account for 
so many getting baptized and yet so few as far as the peak publishers go. Now, because of this growth, they said it was necessary to upgrade their Bethel facilities. Well, they had Bethel facilities. If you look at a news article from June 26, 2018, uh, uh, talking about an update with this branch facility, it said some 50 Bethelites serve full-time in the city of Douala, Cameroon. They will serve be, soon be able to enjoy a new branch facility. So they were basically closing one Bethel and opening a new one. And you would think that, okay, well, this must be a much bigger facility that they were planning on building. Well, if you go to a press release from this year, or not this year, if you go to a press release from 2020, uh, it says this about the brand new branch facility. Currently, 59 brothers and sisters live and work full-time at the new facility. So, nine people. That's, that's what they got by upgrading their, their branch facility. Now, it does say while another 71 commute, but the other one didn't say how many were commuting to Bethel. So I'm just going to ignore that because we're just looking at the full-time Bethelites. Nine. Nine more people were able to work full-time at Bethel, and that's what was necessary. After approval for construction was given, this video was shown in all congregations in that country. By preaching from house to house, the public witnessing effort, our campaigns in local languages, and in other aspects of the ministry, each of you has done good work. Well done. Here at Bethel, we are happy to work shoulder to shoulder with you during this period of rapid increase. So again, we hear about this rapid increase. Now, I will say by Jehovah's Witness standards, the numbers in Cameroon did look pretty all right. Witnesses usually are used to seeing, you know, a one uh, to 2% increase. And in some of these years, you're seeing a 3% increase. So it is going pretty well as far as the preaching work goes. But it's not like that for a very long time after these Bethel facilities are actually built. The governing body is very interested in the progress of the work in our territory. Because of this, we would like to share with you a historic announcement that was made to the Bethel family just a few days ago. We are happy to inform you that the governing body has approved the construction of a new Bethel. Now, imagine that you are Jehovah's Witness living in Cameroon and you see this video and you see a, a, a building where they have air conditioning, they have flat screen TVs, uh, most of the people there look like they had cell phones or tablets. They have nice sound equipment. They already showed that they have recording uh, uh, studios and editing studios. So it's not like they are you know, in some corner suffering in scorching heat because they don't have air conditioning. This looks pretty comfortable, especially considering where it's located. Just keep that in mind. The World Headquarters is already working very hard for the success of this important project. But what can you do to support this work? First, the most important thing is to pray every day for the success of this project. That Jehovah directs the choice of the location and that he blesses all of the work that will be accomplished. Second, you can give financial support by your voluntary contributions to the worldwide work. So now you have a international organization that claims to be a charity doing humanitarian efforts all across the world that's based in New York City that has their big fancy facilities telling people in Cameroon that they are needing to donate money. Even the children, hey, let's make sure we get a shot, guys, of the little girl 
donating her money as well. So they they don't care your age. You can be a kid. You can be an adult. We want everyone to be donating money. Why? Because we have this project, and it is quintessential that we have offices for those extra nine people. Third, the building of a new Bethel is a huge undertaking. We will need many volunteers to help with the construction project. If you are able, please ask your elders for a construction volunteer application form. We are living at a unique time in the history of the preaching work in our branch territory. We would like to thank you in advance for your prayers, your contributions, and your volunteer spirit during the exciting months ahead. Yes, we want your money, we want your prayers, and we also want your body, your labor. So you have these guys in New York. You have all of these white guys in New York, well, and Samuel Turd, that are telling you, hey, it's so important for all of this big advancement in the preaching work, and we're trying to just keep up with all of the advancement that's going on in your branch territory. We really need a new facility to house an additional nine people. Okay, so then the Jehovah's Witnesses in Cameroon are like, okay, well, this surely is, you know, Jehovah's organization, and we're really working towards getting God's message out there. So we're going to do it because of our love for our Creator. Now, what was the result from all of this? What, what was the conclusion? What kind of growth did they experience after this huge undertaking and this upgrade in Cameroon? Well, so between 2015 and 2019, there was a increase, again, of around 4,000 uh, peak publishers. So there were continuing to see this growth. But then what happened after they finally get this new facility? Well, in 2021, they reported 43,526. In 2019, they reported 45,092. So there was a decrease in publishers over that three-year period. Now, what I suspect might have happened here, and again, this is just my speculating, is Watchtower made and released this video to those brothers and sisters as sort of a call to action. And they said, hey, we need your help, brothers and sisters. We need to get this project done for the organization, for God. And they came through. They came through with their financial support, they came through with their spiritual support, and they came through with their physical support. They, they were on the ground, you know, digging and building and hammering and screwing. Then what happened in the world? There was a global pandemic. Now, when this pandemic happened, and these brothers and sisters in Cameroon turned around to Watchtower and said, Hey, Remember when you needed our help to help build your facility to house nine more people? And you already had comfortable, air-conditioned, fancy Zoom camera. Everything was seemed to be working pretty all right. And, and you asked for our help, and we came through. Now, maybe it's time for that to be reciprocal. Can you come through for us? We need help during this global pandemic. We are suffering financially. We are suffering with food. We're suffering with the cost of living. Can you help us? Well, we know what Watchtower's response to these sort of requests were. Ask the government. Ask your local brothers and sisters. I'm sure amongst you guys will sort it out amongst yourself. We don't have any, we can't, we can't be spending that kind of money. We, we can't be doing that. And they must have thought to themselves, well, we gave of ourselves. We spent money, gave money we didn't have. 
money that we should have been saving, time that we could have been using to make more money that we could have saved that would be helping us now. And you're just going to turn your back on us? And we know that that's what happened. Watchtower doesn't do any humanitarian efforts. If you need food, ask the government. I mean, maybe they'll find a brother or sister to help ship it to you, but they're not going to actually go and be purchasing this and delivering it to you because I, I don't know why. Why do they collect so many millions of dollars like other charities and organizations and they can't do anything with it? Uh, they can't pro be providing life straws to people. They can't be trying to get adequate housing for people. They just say, well, you know, we're making movies and stuff. But thanks for the new facility that can house nine more people. Obviously, excitement runs high in the country of Cameroon. What do the optics look like when you have Stephen Lett talking about money, begging the people for more, more, more money, and even showing children in an African in a Central African country in Cameroon, donating money to this billion dollar organization. The optics on that are really bad. I, I, I can't even get my head around what they're actually saying here. So that is my personal hypothesis. This could be completely wrong. This could be only part of the story. Maybe the reason they erased it was just an oversight. I don't know why. May, and if maybe there is a deeper uh, message or a deeper little investigation that needs to happen, then by all means, let me know down in the comments. Or if you come up with something and you make a YouTube video on it, uh, let me know and I'll do a community post. So maybe uh, we can get it out to as many people as possible. But yeah, I am curious what you guys sort of think about this video. I just thought it was absolutely disturbing to see these guys asking for money from the children of Cameroon to move from one air-conditioned building onto another air-conditioned building. And the result of it was people left the organization in Cameroon. When they asked for help and the Watchtower did nothing, it probably sickened them. And they said, well, I guess this isn't God's organization. I guess we're not getting the money that we donated back. I guess we're not getting Kingdom Halls back. They're selling more Kingdom Halls. I guess they just don't care. And we'll see what the numbers look like for the next year coming up, but they have had a decrease in numbers uh, since this project was completed. So time will tell. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining me on another episode of The Lost Light. And I will see you next time. Oh, one other thing that I did forget to mention is that they are building on this branch a new visitor center. Yes, Watchtower is obsessed with their visitor centers these days. So people can go there and have a little tour about the history of the preaching work in, in Cameroon. So if you're wondering, if those people are wondering where their money went, well, boy howdy, you can travel to the city and, and go on a tour about the history of preaching, where it'll tell you that they handed out magazines and people were baptized.